I'm Will here with Millstone Automotive and I'm going to show you how to install the power howling air vent. So first thing we're going to do is verify all the parts. This is a exact kit that you would buy right out of the box. So here we go. You got your power wire, the ground wire with the crimped on battery terminals. This is your fuse holder and fuse with the uh, 30 amp fuse included. This is your three position switch on, off, on, and waterproof cover and then a little indicator plate. On the actuator you've got hardware to mount the tab to the vent and a clevis and mounting hardware to go to the firewall so that's the entire kit let's jump over to the tools required So here we are with the tools required to install the power cowl air vent. You got a hand drill, black marker, 5 16 drill bit, flat head, half inch wrench, and then you're going to want two 7 16 wrenches. The flat head and the half inch are for removing your stock bolts on the vent and the 7 16 are for installing the power cow vent bolts and nuts and things of that nature. Uh, we're going to be drilling two holes so you're going to want some type of eye protection you know whatever whatever that may be and that's it for tools required. We're going to jump over to the truck now and show you how to install the power cow vent. So here we are inside a 53 Ford and this is the stock cow vent. You can see the handle, the linkage, this is the vent. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of tension off of it, take a 7 16 wrench and these two bolts up here, it's going to take the handle off. Alright, I'm going to take my half inch wrench and my flat head and this has got a little square nut on there. My light's not on this side. And that's that. That is your cow vent linkage. Make sure this cow vent moves freely. Doesn't hang up on anything. Looks good. Alright, now I'm going to jump over to installing the power cow vent. What I'm going to do is take these bolts off the top. We've got a bolt and two washers. We're going to capture the tab of the vent in between the two washers, go through the actuator, and then put a lock nut and or a lock washer and a nut on the other side. So I'm going to take my nut or bolt and put it like that. 
I'm gonna put this one on this side and take my actuator, take my rubber bands off here, give me some slack. Slide my actuator on the bolt. Now I'm gonna put my lock washer nut on here. Okay, now I'm gonna snug this up with my 217 wrenches. Now you don't have to tighten this down or lock it down, but you wanna snug it up until you compress the lock washer. So once again, do not lock this down. Just snug it up until you compress the lock washer. And you still need to make sure you got some movement in there. Okay. This truck, we went ahead and put some green tape on here. It's already been outfitted with a, a power cowl vent. So we went ahead and put some green tape so we can go through marking it again and drilling out the holes and get all that. So I'm just taking the bolts off the bottom of the foot here so I can push it up to the firewall and mark it where to drill the holes. I'm just going to set my hardware down here on the ground. All right. Got my black marker. I'm gonna let this hang down as straight as possible and mark the holes. Like that. In case you can't see that, I'm gonna put a little bigger mark there. Remove the power bin. I don't want to hurt it. Okay, looks pretty good. You noticed on the foot, one of your bolts has got two nuts on it. And that's gonna be for this cliff right here. So I'm gonna put bolt a nut the top one just gets a bolt and a washer and I'm gonna push them through the holes and the top one there she goes 
put them in there at the same time is a little easier. Now we're going to jump over to the other side of the firewall and put the nuts and the bolts on. So here we are on the engine firewall side. You can see we got our big motor over here on the right and I'm going to zoom in where the bolts come through. You can see we put some more green tape there just to make it stand out. And I'm just going to put some lock washers and some nuts on there. Here we are with our 7 16 wrench, and I'm just gonna lock these down real tight. Nice. Yeah, and that's that. And now we're gonna jump over to the wiring and install the switch. Okay, so here we are. Inside, we're going to put the switch and the dash. Um, the first thing, the switch has white dot to indicate the up position and black dot to indicate the down position. So you're always going to want the white dots facing up when you install it in the dash. And that would be up is up for the actuator and down is down for the actuator. So let's go ahead and remove the cover. Take this little nut off. indicator play okay this truck is not using the choke hole so you just got an electric choke on there and so what we're going to do is just stick this switch in the choke hole and we included this little washer so we're going to stick the switch in the hole now if you're using your choke hole or your switch you can uh, you need to drill a half inch hole in your dash, and stick this in there. Same process, switch, washer. Indicator plate. And There she goes. Um, now, of course, you can always put your black cover back on and tighten her up. And that's your switch in the dash. Now, like I said, if you wanted to use, if that hole was already used or somewhere else, you would drill a half inch hole and then obviously do the same thing, put your switch in there. So now we're going to jump over to wiring. This is obviously your power, and this is your ground, so we're just going to go ahead and take the band, rubber bands off. Your ground. Now, this truck has the battery in the engine compartment, like, uh, like newer vehicles have. So it's real easy just to use this hole right next to your actuator and run your wire straight out of there and it's an equal distance from the left side to the right side. So if your battery's on the left or the right, it's an equal distance. 
Uh, we gave you enough wire that if you're using the stock battery position, which is underneath the passenger floorboard, we gave you enough wire to run it all the way, all the way down there. But like I said, this truck just has it in the engine compartment on the left side, the driver's side. So we're just going to use this stock hole that's in the, in the firewall right next to the actuator. So we're just going to stick a couple wires out there. Actuator wire. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this rubber band, band it up, and get it out of the way for now. And I'm just gonna stick it up under the dash, like so. Now, in an interest of keeping things clean, I'm going to do the same thing to my power and ground wires after I hook them up to the battery. So let's go ahead and jump over to the engine side and hook the power and the ground up. So here we are on the engine side of the firewall, and you can see right over there that's where we had the green tape and we stuck the wires through the hole next to the actuator and what we're going to do is run the wires right over to our battery terminals so you're going to put red to positive and black to ground and I got my half inch wrench I'm going to grab these wires and give me a little bit of slack here make sure they it. I'm going to, in the interest of keeping things clean, I'm going to run these up underneath their battery tray. And what I'm going to do is just loosen up the power here. Slide it right over the terminal once again, red to positive and black to the ground. that now we're gonna jump over to the inside operate the switch up and down and it should be ready to go